Hey everyone, welcome to Coding for Kids. Today we're going to go over the variable blocks in Scratch. So if you don't know, this is where they're located. Once you click on create a new project and navigate to variables on the left hand bar, you're going to see the four variable blocks in Scratch. In today's video, I'll go over what a variable is, then I'll go over how to make one, and then I'll go over what each variable block does. And finally, we will make a super duper simple project to practice what we learned. Let's start. So just as background information, a variable is a value that can be changed, but it's retained in the program's memory. You can save a certain number or a value to that variable. This variable can then be called later in the code. So when I say value, you can either store a number, a string, or whatever. So for example, if you have a variable x and you set it equal to pizza, Instead of having to type pizza every time, you can just type x. The code realizes that x is the same thing as pizza because you've already defined x to be pizza earlier in the code. So you can still change what the variable represents later in the code, but variables are really useful in terms of code reusability and just making your code shorter because you don't have to type in the entire literal every single time. Now that you know what a variable is, let's go over how to make one. So in Scratch, once you navigate to the variables category, there's a button that says make a variable. So you can click on that and make a variable. I'll just name my variable testing. So normally you would want to make, you would want to name a variable so that the name is super descriptive about what the variable represents. But since this is just testing purposes, I'm going to name it testing and I'm gonna click OK. As you can see, this brings up a new variable and it also shows up on the stage where the cat is. The zero next to the variable represents its value. So currently testing is set to zero. If I wanna set testing to another number, then I can just use the set block to change that value. So I'll do set testing to, let's say 15. And when I run that block, you can see that the value of testing changes to 15. Similarly, if I want to set it to 30, I can just do that and then set testing to 30. And then you can see that the value of testing changes to 30. If I want to change, if I want to change testing by a specific number, then I can use the second block, the change variable by block. So I can change testing by 10. And when I do that, if everything works, testing should go to 40. So when I click that, you can see that testing goes to 40. If I do it again, testing goes to 50, 60, 70, and so on. And now that our variable is really high, if I want to set it back to zero, I can just use the set block again to set it to zero. Finally, we have the show and hide variable blocks. These blocks just show and hide the variable on the stage. So if I want to hide the variable, I can just click the hide testing variable and then it's gonna disappear. And if I, I wanna show it, then I can just click the show variable block. So the reason these blocks would be useful in a real life scenario is if you were making a game where you wanna, where you want the player to see the score every, every time they play the game. So in that case, you would wanna show the variable, show the score variable so that the player can know what their score is. But if you're tracking something that you don't want the player to know, then you can hide that variable so that the player doesn't know what that variable represents. So now that you know what each of the variables do, let's make a super simple game in order to practice what we learned. So this game is super simple. It's just going to keep track of how many times the cat jumps and how many times the cat ducks. In order to code that, we're first going to code the jump and the duck logic. So I'm just going to uncheck this variable and because we don't need it in our game. I'm going to make two new variables, jumps and ducks. Next, let's code the jump and the duck logic. So we're going to go into control and grab an if block. We're going to actually grab two of them because we want one of them to be on the lookout for jumps and one of them to be on the lookout for ducks. So I'm going to go into sensing because that's where all the interaction blocks are. Then I'm going to use the when up arrow pressed, then jump, and then when down arrow 
is pressed, we want the cat to duck. So in order to make the cat look like it jumps, we're going to just change its Y position by a certain number. So I'm going to change Y by, let's say, 15. And then I'm going to change Y by negative 15 so that the cat goes up and then back down. If we just leave it like it is right now, the problem is that it's going to perform these actions instantly. So we can't even see the cat jump. It's just going to look like nothing happened. So in order to fix that issue, we're going to go into control and use the weight block in order to slow the process down so that we can actually see the jump. I'm going to put it between both the change Y blocks and I'm going to set the wait time to 0.2 seconds. And I'll just put the wait when green flag clicked on it so that it works. So when I click the green flag and I click the up arrow, Oops, sorry, I have to put these in a forever loop so that it's always going to check if these keys are pressed. So I'm going to go into control and then put them in a forever loop. So when I click the green flag and I click the up arrow, you can see that the cat jumps, goes up and then back down. So I'm just going to duplicate these blocks to put into the duck cat, into the duck if statement because a duck is the same exact thing as a jump, except it's reversed. So here I'm going to change y by negative 15 first and then by positive 15 so that it looks like the cat goes down and then back up. So this is what that looks like. So this is a jump and this is a duck. Jump, duck, jump, duck. All right, now let's add in the variable block so that we tr keep track of the jumps and the ducks. So let's go into variables and let's initially set jumps and ducks to zero so that the game resets every time we restart it. And these have to be outside the forever loop. Next, when the up arrow is pressed, we want uh, jumps to go up by one. So we're gonna use the change block to do that. So we're gonna say change jumps by one. And similarly, when the down arrow is pressed, we want the ducks to go up by one. So we're going to say change ducks by one. So let's test your code. So when I click the green flag and click the up arrow, it's going to jump and change and the jump variable goes up by one. And if I duck, it goes if the, the duck variable goes up by one, jump goes up by one, duck goes up by one. And that's just the super simple game that we made in order to practice practice with the variable blocks. So hopefully you found that helpful. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later.